but a historic agreement was reached between Russia and Israel this week. It's nothing to do with politics. For a change. After, yeah, for a change. After 100 years in which one of the world's most important and priceless holdings of ancient Hebrew texts, which has been largely kept out of sight in Moscow, now the Gunsberg collection will be made fully available to the public for the first time. Our culture correspondent Maya Margit has the story. A historic deal. Russia and Israel have agreed to digitize one of the world's most important private collections of Hebrew manuscripts and books, the Ginsberg Collection. The National Library of Israel in Jerusalem and Russia's State Library in Moscow will work together to put the treasure trove online. Thousands of rare ancient texts, soon accessible to the public at the click of a mouse. This is indeed a very important project, especially now, 100 years after the Balfour Declaration. It's important for the whole Jewish community around the world. The Perry Foundation began functioning several years ago. One of our first projects was the digitization of a collection of Islamic literature. It is symbolic that we are finishing this project with the digitization of the Ginsburg Collection, which has around 9,000 books and 2,000 manuscripts. The collection features biblical texts, mystical works on the Kabbalah, and books of Jewish philosophy. Since 1920, they've all been housed at the Russian State Library. Israel's been trying to convince Moscow for decades to bring them to the Jewish state. Now, after years of talks between Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and Russian President Vladimir Putin, researchers and the public will finally get to see them. The digitization of the Ginsburg collection is part of a much wider project. Last August, Israel's National Library launched Ktiv, the world's biggest digital archive of Jewish manuscripts. Tens of thousands of handwritten and illustrated texts from all over the world were reunited for the first time in centuries online. Russia's State Library hopes the Ginsburg collection will add to that. If something, God forbid, happens to the manuscript, there will be a quality digital copy a sort of a backup. This project will also really help our colleagues working at the National Library of Israel. They will be able to use these manuscripts to the fullest and also share them with a wide range of Israeli researchers. Though the originals will remain in Russia, researchers hope digitizing them will preserve them for future generations. Well, joining us in the studio is Maya Margit, our culture correspondent. Maya, this, this incredible collection, how, what's the background, what's the story here? How did it end up in the Russia State Library? Well, it's quite an interesting story, and it begins in the 19th century, uh, when the Ginsburg family, which was a family of philanthropists, a Jewish philanthropists in Russia, uh, they purchased a number of uh, different manuscripts over several generations in that family. And then in 1910, the grandson of the original person who started the, the collection, Joseph Ginsburg, so his grandson, David, passed away, and then the Zionist Federation at that point tried to purchase the collection but there was a lot of stuff going on there yeah, was the to, world war to bring it to the Palestine for right example. to bring it to Ottoman Palestine what happened is that it wasn't until 1917 that the wife of David Ginsburg managed to say that she would donate the collection to the forerunner to the Israel State National Library what happened is that the Soviets came in and they Took the, they seized the collection and they nationalized it. They brought it to Moscow from St. Petersburg and they put it in their own Russian state library. And that's basically what happened with the ownership of that collection. And now anybody is going to be able to go online uh, and see it. Uh, what about seeing it in person? Is that yeah. any kind of possibility or there's still, that's only really for maybe scholars? That's the thing. You have to go to Moscow. It's a private collection. You have to travel to Moscow to be able to see it in person. Uh, this is considered by the Israeli government to be a first step. What they really want is to bring the collection physically into right. Israel to the National Library and they've been trying for decades, it's decades of talks with Moscow, but for them they see this as a very positive first step because at least researchers and the public will have, be able to see them, uh, which is something already that wasn't possible You're before. You're talking about decades of, of yeah. talks between these two countries. Any sense in why now, why they finally agreed to bring it to this point, to make it public? Well, the, the answer is quite simple, and it's uh, money. Uh, <laughs> it almost always is, isn't it? That's the that answer. is the, yes. always the simplest So answer. the Perry Foundation, there's this foundation that got involved, the Russian Foundation, owned by a billionaire in Russia, who donated an undisclosed amount of money to this project to be able to digitize this entire collection. So that's basically what set this whole project in motion, and it's going to be part of Israel's National Library website called Ktiv, which is a major project where they're reuniting all of the world's Jewish and Hebrew manuscripts into one place for 
for everyone to be able to see. It's interesting because I know the Russians are also holding a, a collection of uh, manuscripts from the Ch first, I believe, Chabad Rebbe, and that has been a real source of contention between Israel and Russia and the uh, Chabad community. So maybe this step will lead to further steps in other Jewish treasures being held there. That's that's how they basically see it. They see this as a first step, a positive step, but they want more. They want to right. physically be able to see the collection. All right, Maya Margie, thanks very much for bringing us that.